person sees all. How long is it going to be before they actually tell us about everything that's going on on the moon? People will say, well, they're not going to tell us everything about what's going on on the moon. They're not going to tell us anything. Well, I think they will because there's too much of an implication with the humans that are going to have to be going to the moon. So the structures that are there are easy enough to hide if, for example, the astronauts that go there will not be landing in the areas of the cities, obviously, right? But what about Elon Musk wanting to populate Mars and to create a civilization on Mars? Do you realize that? If he wants, Elon Musk wants to create a civilization on Mars, his starship would hold approximately 1,000 people to send there. Now, who do you think he would send? Well, he's already talking about it. Engineers, doctors, need I say more? Everything you need to start a civilization. Of course, all while remaining in contact with Earth. So what are their strategies and what are their problems, actually? What do they have to overcome? Easy. Time travel? Yeah, well, that would be jumping it a little bit, even though they are doing, for real, the Pentagon themselves, experimentation on that. They're going to need a spacecraft fast enough to be able to get to Mars, and one that will probably get there faster than in a couple of months or years. When you hear of a launch from Starlink or any launch, NASA, there's always a launch window. That launch window means, for example, if they're going to uh, look at the launch for Jupiter, JUICE, they launch that, the mission to go do Jupiter, we'll be hearing about that uh, when we're a lot older. But they waited for the launch window, meaning Jupiter was aligned with Earth. If not, it takes a lot longer. There's like a window launch period uh, for Mars, I think it's every 11 years or something like that. It has to be just aligned enough for it to be able to get um, an astronaut there, you know, and not uh, in a couple of days. It takes a while because we don't have a spaceship that goes fast enough. If we do, it's one where there's only a couple of people inside of it. But to make a starship that goes at the speed of light or whatever that will get there really fast, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Elon Musk's uh, recent Starship launch, well, showed us that it exploded. Of course, there's a lot of advancement they did anyways, but look at it overall. They literally crashed, okay? When they crashed, well, it, like for example, imagine there being an astronaut there. I wouldn't want to be the astronaut next to go up in the Starship and to be watching all these mistakes with, um, you must know, like I do, if you watch some of the launches, the hoses, the leaks, all the problems that occur, you know, I mean, wow. It's a risky business <laughs> trying to leave the planet, I'll tell you that. But they're talking more and more about the UFOs. And at one point, you know, maybe the, the leak that just came out has um, some UFO information inside of that. Who knows? Um, Luis Elizondo, again, still under trial. We have to wait for that. I'm excited for one because they've been finding water all over the place. They've been finding vegetation on asteroids, okay? They're talking about organic material on asteroids. Um, now they're talking about it on other planets. It's only a matter of time till they talk about it um, on the moon. Hopefully very, very soon. Um, it's been cloudy for a long time, by the way. And they're even talking about it on the news. So a lot of astronomers like me and you have a lot of problems being able to see the sky these days. But every chance I get, I do get out to do more. And I'm going to be looking into the footage once again to look at any detail of some new UFOs until, again, more UFOs come by in the sky here and or that I film them on the moon.
I want to thank each and every one of you for having taken the time to subscribe to the channel. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, and I appreciate the interest. I have a big problem with the images coming from the spacecraft that the private Japanese company, iSpace, I believe. Here you see it says, iSpace loses contact with its moon lander. If you're, you know, as excited as I am, I'm really anxious to be able to see the moon. With my 14-inch telescope, there are so many incredible details that literally visually prove that the moon has constructed objects on it. Objects, 90 degree angles, and objects that could not occur naturally in nature. And I see an image like this of the moon, close, but the problem I have is that there are no objects on the moon. It looks like it was, you know, somebody, you know, a tornado went by and just blew everything that's elevated off of the surface. We know we have even astronauts themselves that said that the surface of the moon had a lot of objects that were, you know, high rising off of the surface. Why would they not land in an area? Honestly, this is the image that they bring us back. And even at 100 kilometers over the surface, I was blown away. I mean, this is ridiculous. Aside from the frame rate that the Pentagon's complaining about, they're not talking about the real UFO truth. Those videos that they're seeing is the Pentagon, and if the Pentagon is just going to retaliate by answering that it's a frame rate problem or that it must be a sensor problem in some of the cameras, what type of piece of shit material are you guys using, devices and whatnot? I mean, think of it. This is a f under $400 infrared camera, and I was able to see this UFO disappear and streak across the sky. No pixelation there, and that streaking that you see wasn't frame rate. It's because this mama left like a bat out of hell. Watch what happens here. There's no cut. It jumps upwards, and you can see the UFO uh, come to a point, right, and then streak across the sky. This is the one and only time that I ever was able to capture that. I've seen it two or three times in my life. So obviously not an event that happens very often, but this, with an infrared camera, you're looking at a UFO streaking across the sky. Look at the frame. You go forward and backwards to try to see. There's no cut there. There's a jump with the UFO. That could be frame rate, right? But aside from that, it's not hiding us the image. It looks jumpy as it's going ahead, boop, 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 frame by frame. And that's totally normal, right? But it's not not showing us the image. You see the point coming out of the nose of that craft, and that's its sensor or whatever getting ready to literally jump into a friggin' portal. And you can see that live with the infrared camera. Watch here, up close, a beautiful point, and then whoop, the streak of light. It just disappears like a bat out of hell, out of nowhere. So people wonder, is it for real? Are there UFOs in the sky streaking across the sky? Yes. Are there UFOs landing and taking off from the moon? Yes, you're looking at one right now. That's how small they are. They are tiny because it's so far away the moon. To be able to distinguish them, you got to slow down everything and bring the exposure down to be able to really adjust them. Spoke about one of my favorites and Jean-Claude Beyond Mystic 003's favorite, also very interesting surface of the moon. There's no red filtering here, by the way. There are certain areas on the moon that are red, and this happens to be an area. The exposure is taken down quite simply. We're on the edge of a crater, and you see a light light up and then all of a sudden an explosion literally on fire the craft right there in the center so these are small bits of information and slowing it down to be able to show all these events and i've accumulated lots of events over the years but that is a ufo that just got shot on the moon so there's some type of war going on or you could say that you know, are they biological creatures? I would doubt that they would be burning up like that in, in the atmosphere of the moon. So what the hell's going on? You see the projectiles coming out of the craft, and then you see that craft itself catches on fire. And that's 
truth, visual proof. Three projectiles, uh, projectiles, sorry, leaving a UFO, and look at the fires all around them. This is a couple of years back, at least two years back, that I caught this on the moon. Am I going to throw that away? Of course not. This is what everyone is looking for. Everyone wants to uh, find out if there's someone up there, and yeah, there's more than just somebody up there. There are definitely thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, maybe even more, beings on the moon, breakaway civilization or not, that they're not talking about. The world is so naive, all of us are, that we believe that that's a crater. We believe that a piece of rock is going to fall down on the ground and it's going to form cities. That's right, Apollo 17 landing, you say? That's the crater where they would have landed. You want to know what's just to the left of it? Well, there you see it on the right, and there's a square with no filtering, a massive rectangle that any field like archaeologists or geologists will be able to confirm to you, well, of course not. That's not natural. And they'll be able to tell you you don't need a degree to find that out. As a matter of fact, you don't have to work in the, in the field of archaeology to be able to know that that's something that was constructed. You know, is it a swimming pool? I highly doubt it. It's big. <laughs> it's it's pretty big. Three light sources and lines that go up to right where they said they landed. I'm not even believing that they landed there the way they did because I know they didn't, but we're, we can't hide the truth. There are structures where they say that they landed. The Pentagon and other secret associations were either doing or wanting to do experimentation on the moon related to anti-gravity. So... They're trying to develop the technology or they know all about the technology and they're probably trying to try it out. That's the scary part when you think of it, honestly, and that's just a little bit of what's going on. Without accusing anybody, some of these declassified documents are showing us that all the conspiracy theorists and everything we've said over the years, everyone that believes that something's going on and the secret projects and uh, dark, you know, black funding and black projects really do exist. But there's been a lot of controversy around it. Even though they've admitted, several countries admitted, and still are admitting that secret projects is something that they really do. Like, it's real. So if they wanted to drop nuke, let's just say, the moon with another or several other associations to see if they could create a portal a time machine, because they're studying time machines also, or maybe not time machine, but I think so, but they're studying teleportation and time travel. So that's, you know, we're not talking about just building a ship and heading over to Russia or China and taking a, a spy look at them or s with surveillance equipment and stuff. Now, you know, out into space costs a lot of money to go out to space. So they have to be getting the funding from somewhere that's 100% uh, certain. And it's just interesting. So now I want to take a look at my research because I got a lot of captures over the years and it's not many years. I've been here. This is my seventh year starting and well, started. And I've shown for six years several captures throughout the the year that I get both in uh, the winter and even in the summer. One of my favorite ones, and I've captured two or three of them and was able to document them, uh, let's, we'll be looking at 2021, 2022, very recent. We're going to look at one that split in two. And not just split in two, it was stationary. In this video, we'll look together at footage of stationary lights in the sky that before being stationary were in motion. We know that satellites don't do that. So by analyzing all the characteristics and documenting these characteristics and visually being able to show some of them to you guys and to everyone else in the world, we're going to be able to easily prove step-by-step step every sighting whether it is or not a satellite and whether it's a camera sensor error or not because now the military has integrated this possibility and well hey we can't rule it out now can we recently said that jeremy corbell's video that came from a navy person did not represent something alien and was only a drone that was looking triangular because the camera sensor had created that effect. Anyways, I could go into a whole slew of 
reasons what they are giving. So basically, a month ago, the Navy said they are not going to disclose anything UFO or UAP related. So that means anything and everything the public can find, show, and capture, and in a way maybe come up with a theory to try to understand what we are seeing. And of course, being honest, we'll get there. and We'll see a whole lot of things, whether it be alien, human, foreign countries, that we don't have to label it. I think it'd be safer just viewing. Now, let's head over to that one UFO that was stationary, one of them, because there's more than one, that was stationary in the sky, you're going to see it stationary in the sky, and then you're going to see it go further away and split in two, and then we'll go to the one that was in motion and stopped over the house to meet up with other UFOs, by the way. Let's see that now. So, as you see right now, it's a stationary UFO that is over the house, literally over my house, and it's going to go further away from me instead of going from left to right, as you'll see there. It'll get really quickly smaller, and you'll see it going further away, and then split in two. I'm going to try to show it a couple of ways so that you can see it properly, and don't worry, I'll show it to you full screen also. Welcome back. This is a lunar wave that I caught last year. It's a double lunar wave and you can also see as they're crossing over top of the surface of the moon, one behind the other, fast enough speed. I'm gonna speed it up here a bit faster because I do want you to see both of them. You can look for the original videos online. So what would a camouflage or a force field in theory look like around a planet if they exist or if they don't exist it's besides the point we're seeing something that was not caused by a plane of course there were no planes at that time either and the lunar waves that are going by can be ripples um, from space and time continuum moving across because something large entered the solar system maybe it's because a black hole um, just consumed something. And by the way, black holes take many years to consume a planet. A black hole is not just a hole. It's an actual solid, very dense, solid object. And it creates a dimple in the fabric of space and time as it sits there in the universe. And it attracts everything around it, including all the light from all the stars. Recently, a black hole was seen beaming an incredible gamma ray burst of light towards another galaxy and another star, and I think it destroyed it. So could you imagine if that was alien technology, a black hole, and it was being used um, as a weapon? Wow, that would be scary. We're manipulating the weather here. So humans on the moon, most likely, and a whole slew of other beings some that were created, some that are being experimented on, I believe. There's lots of stuff going on on the moon. Everyone, thanks for the generous contributions and thanks for watching the videos. Doesn't matter cause disclosure's coming soon. Disclosure's coming soon.